For babies and children, learning is a natural process. Through play, they explore and develop their cognitive, social, and emotional skills. Early experiences in childhood set the stage for later growth, forming the basis for a healthy life and lifelong learning. When, how, and in which environment do we learn best? Which brain mechanisms play a key role in this process? And what happens if children face less than ideal learning conditions due to experiences like poverty, violence, or neglect? Is it possible to learn a musical instrument when we are older? Why do children learn differently from adults? Brigitte Röder is a professor of biological psychology and neuropsychology at the University of Hamburg in Germany and a member of the Hector Fellow Academy. Her research is focused on exploring these questions. Imagine a child is born. It doesn't know anything about this world. Nevertheless, children manage to acquire a huge knowledge within just a few years. The brain develops based on predetermined programs, but also based on experiences. Aber auch uh, basierend auf den Erfahrungen. Childhood experiences shape brain development alongside genetic factors. This is one of Brigitte Röder's key research findings. The brain's networks alter based on learning experiences and surroundings. This adaptability of the brain is known as neuroplasticity. This is the decisive question. How does a child manage the experiences gained in a way that the brain develops into such a complex and powerful thing? Nature seems to have designed specific mechanisms for this, namely windows during which we learn exceptionally well. We refer to them as sensitive periods. Rashi Pant is also fascinated by the brain. She is one of the researchers in Brigitte Röder's team. I am also really interested in sensitive periods, so these brief windows in life where neuroplasticity is very, very high. Um, so for example, it's very difficult for me to learn German as an adult, but if I had come here um, at age six, it would be much easier. Her doctoral project aimed to understand the mechanisms behind these sensitive periods in brain development. To this end, she studied individuals who were born blind and who recovered vision later in life. Sensitive periods also explain why children find it easier than adults to learn foreign languages or musical instruments. And that is also why there is this saying that the sooner you begin, the greater and more permanent the learning achievements are. So I'm trying to understand how experience changes the brain, how various life experiences can alter certain parts of your brain that were genetically determined to have a certain function. But when, um, for example, you can't see, those parts of the brain are taken over by other functions. In the lab, Röder's team conducts experiments with test subjects, exploring how they tackle specific tasks and observing the brain's activity during these tasks. For this, they use methods like eye tracking as well as measuring electrical activity on the surface of the head. This helps link stimuli, behavior and brain activities. So basically you have a cap that you put on participants and you put in little electrodes and they detect the electrical signals that neurons give off when they're firing. Um, and what we try to do is we look at those signals and we see whether they change based on whether a person is blind, whether a person is sighted, whether a person was born blind but recovered vision later in life. And we try to see how this alters um, what we call uh, the neural representations of actions. So basically what happens in your brain when um, you're doing a certain task, you're seeing certain kinds of stimuli. Rashi Pant, now an alumna of the Hector Fellow Academy, moved from the USA to Germany to pursue her doctorate. 
This is a really unique project. When I was studying in the US, I heard about it, um, where the LV Prasad I Institute, which is in my home country of India, um, was collaborating with the University of Hamburg. And uh, it's a really exciting project because it lets me use basic science, which is my first interest, um, but applied to real world contexts with real um, applications for people whose lives can be benefited um, by this kind of work. The LV Prasad Eye Institute is an eye clinic as well as a research center dedicated to eye diseases. Brigitte Röder played a fundamental role in establishing the Indo-German lab within the institute. Thanks to the extensive network of the LV Prasad Eye Institute, the researchers from Hamburg can study larger groups of individuals. In India, many blind people do not receive adequate eye treatment resulting in a higher number of adults who undergo surgery to regain their vision. At this point in time, important sensitive periods have already ended. For Brigitte Röder, the collaboration with India is a unique experience. Her biggest dream would be a large neuroscience center with the LV Prasad Eye Institute in Hyderabad. This collaboration with the LV Prasad Eye Institute, where we can observe these individuals and examine them using our research approaches, is the future in understanding how early experiences permanently shape the brain. During her doctorate with Professor Herder's group, Rashi Pant received support from the Hector Fellow Academy. Apart from financial aid, young researchers benefit from high-ranking supervision by outstanding professors. Brigitte Röder greatly values being part of the Academy's interdisciplinary network, finding it incredibly enriching. In the Hector Fellow Academy, you encounter exceptionally brilliant individuals, all of whom are leading scientists. They exhibit profound passion for their research, are engaging, and frequently excel at effectively communicating their knowledge. My experiences in the Hector Fellow Academy have led to the most intriguing conversations, extensive learning, and, most importantly, a contagious enthusiasm for research has left an indelible mark on me. Brigitte Röder's enthusiasm for her own research work motivates her, and at the same time, she wants to give something back. I am a basic researcher through and through, and gaining knowledge is the driving force that brings me to the lab every day. Nevertheless, we are funded by our society, and we also have a certain obligation to give back. I believe our model is outstanding in researching the effects of early childhood experiences on brain development. This model illustrates how other adverse childhood experiences imprint lasting marks on brain structure. It is crucial to answer the question of whether and how important developmental stages can be compensated later in life. When, uh, I'm when a child grows up in precarious conditions, it may be exposed to neglect, violence or poor nutrition. With our model, we can investigate what level of recovery we can expect when the environment returns to a typical state. Brigitte Röder's research significantly contributes to understanding the link between biological brain processes and human behavior. Her work emphasizes the critical role of good learning conditions and a healthy social environment in children's mental and physical development, shaping the evolution of innovative therapeutic approaches. Our brain accomplishes fascinating tasks. This is why researchers in artificial intelligence and robotics are very interested in Brigitte Röder's work. Currently, there exists no machine or robot capable of absorbing and processing environmental information as efficiently as a human does.